At Dickens Heath Primary School in Solihull, Deputy Head Jackie Nichols has been carrying out an Assessing Pupil Progress case study. In this four-part series, we're getting an up-close view of APP in action as Jackie gathers detailed evidence and diagnoses the strengths and weaknesses of six benchmark pupils. After finding out there were gaps in her pupils' maths vocabulary, she designed lessons that helped her to reinforce those maths terms. Parallels, you're going to play exactly the same tune. And enabled her to gather evidence on their progress. And I think what APP has brought to this whole process is being able to really identify in a very focused way what it is children know and where they need support in terms of their next steps for development. This week we learn more about APP in practice when Jackie's class create an exhibition of mathematical artwork and teach their parents about shape and measure. It has to make 180 degrees. 80 degrees. Finally, Jackie's evidence goes before the moderation panel. I really have to be accurate and I really have to make sure I know that the evidence I've got is going to support my level judgement. I think it'd be secure level three, Yeah, but I'm yeah. not sure that there's enough evidence to show, to show it. level four. And we'll be getting more tips from teachers around the country who've already tried APP. That's the one thing that APP is, is designed to do. It's to take that full picture of that child. And really, class teachers are best placed to be able to provide that. The first thing you need to decide is what your background colour is going to be. Now, so tissue paper, we've got... Today, Jackie's gathering evidence on the benchmark children's final piece of work in their unit on shape and measure. She's challenged the pupils to produce a piece of artwork based on their maths learning. Yeah, so you've got to put some congruence in. And later now. today, we use their own artwork to teach their parents about shape. How do you know it's a pentagon? I think that one of the more difficult things is providing opportunities for the children to use the mathematical vocabulary in many more contexts than just the maths lesson. And I found that by using the arc, it has given the children a platform to do that. What do you notice about the angles of this shape, Megan? Um, Have a look at this one and this one here. That they're um, obtuse. Good girl. Do you think Jackie's APP mentor, Donna, is keeping an eye on proceedings. Good girl. So we've got two obtuse angles. It's really nice to see her style of teaching, the way she engages with the children, the way she's asking them questions. Some of the questions are very targeted to specific children, some of them are very general. So it, it gives her lots of opportunities to gather um, assessment evidence. Now, for a sample of work to stand up to moderation, it needs to be very clear about the context of the work, what the children said, what it was that they did that made Jackie come to the conclusion that they'd understood that particular concept. Um, so she will need to start writing some of these things down and maybe even annotating some of the children's work as they go along. Right, I think you guys need to set to your task and let's see what you can create. With her evidence nearly complete, she's hoping to gain further insights today that will secure her level judgments. So I would get yourself a new piece so that but don't put your question marks on because you okay. don't want to lead your mums and dads to the to the clues, do you really? The focused art session for me was a real eye-opener and I think without it I would have missed some really significant things about the children's learning. What I did was I just drew, drew loads of lines. Mm. And I, I was finding in that session it gave me a better opportunity to really ask the, the pertinent questions, the questions that challenged and made them think and asked them um, to give reasons and to explain. Okay, so what does congruent mean? It means two, when, um, two shapes are the same size and the same shape. Good, how do you know it's an irregular hexagon? That one hasn't got all the same shapes because that one's smaller than that one. Good, so it's about the length of the sides yeah. that are important. Then we did some art with it and that helped because it's fun in a way. Sometimes when you just sit and write to math books, that isn't fun for me because I like to do things with it. There's a line of symmetry through that. Fantastic. Yeah, great stuff. Well done. I found that lesson quite interesting because we didn't just uh, use our books. We, like, um, explained. 
They'll keep going, but they never okay. ever touch each Let's look at that trapezium. Do you think there's two edges there that would never ever meet? No. Um. In particular, working with Sam, um, whilst in the oral work within the classroom in the previous day's lesson, I really thought that he'd understood what perpendicular and parallel was. In fact, although he could identify it, what he then couldn't do was um, give mathematical reasons and explanations for it. And I spent quite a lot of time trying to get to the nub of the, the point where the two lines will never meet because the space between is always going to be the same. What are we actually measuring? Uh, the width apart. Excellent, the width apart. So let's have a little look. Shall we turn our ruler around so we're measuring in centimetres? What I noticed was that he gave the kind of exact answer or the, the pattern of the explanation of parallel lines. And you see that sometimes with children as they're starting to learn about something, they'll repeat word for word the explanation that the teacher's given, possibly sometimes without fully understanding it. And it wasn't until he sat down with Jackie and talked it through that you could start to see that concept growing a little bit more. So, if it's 3.2 all the way along, when you've measured the distance here, and here, and here, and here, what does that tell you about that, those two edges? There must be what? Um, parallel. Fantastic. They must be parallel. Another surprise throughout the whole process, and particularly in that lesson of the six children for art, was Luke, where I really feel he started to come into his own. Whilst he was very vocal in the lesson the day before, I really felt in this session um, he showed that he could really reason and explain. These two are parallel. Good These and two are very good. So it's got two sets of parallel lines and that's why it's our parallelogram. Like put artwork together as well and that helped me understand about congruent shapes, parallel lines and perpendicular lines and I think now I know what they mean. Is that a right angle? Good boy, it's a right angle triangle. Yeah. Now she's ready to face the moderation panel, but will Jackie's evidence support her level judgments? I really have to be accurate and I really have to make sure I know that the evidence I've got is going to support my level judgment. Before we hear about Jackie's evidence, how have other teachers got ready for moderation? I collected my evidence to take along to the first external moderation. I arrived, I had, hadn't photocopied it the right amount of times, so I didn't have the correct paperwork, I hadn't filled in the forms, um, and it was quite, I found it really intimidating. I felt quite unprepared. And while everyone in the room was in a very similar situation to me, it, it was a very awkward situation and I have to say I didn't enjoy my first moderation at all. We found it really difficult because we were only asked to bring between six and eight pieces of work and we found it hard to, to narrow it down to that amount and, and as we've developed over time we're much better now at, at getting samples that are based around using and applying. Some of the things that we thought was really important was always have the date on a piece of evidence. If you haven't got the date on it it's going to be worthless really. Um, also jotting down whether the child was working independently or in a group and the other thing we were looking at was whether it was done on the day it was taught because you know if it's been done on the day it's taught that's not really independent. Often you then discover that there's missing evidence that you can't make a judgment because you haven't got enough and at that point you can think well I need to do this or that to actually um, find that out so you then construct tasks that help you to find that information out. Um, and that's good anyway, because if you haven't got the evidence, chances are you don't know or haven't taught thoroughly the thing you need to. Before she sends her evidence to the external moderators, mentors Donna and Louise have some final tips for Jackie. This again is photographic evidence that um, she understands that term very well now. And if you were using that as a piece of evidence for moderation, that would just need annotating, so it could be just scribbled on the back, so that we know what right. context it was done in, how independently she did that, she right. wasn't coached by you to find Anything that. Anything that she'd said as well alongside that. Using the evidence that you've got here, we need to make some decisions, or you need to make some decisions as to which of these criteria you can highlight, things that you're Securely. confident that the children are secure in. Jackie's evidence taken from her six benchmark children has enabled her to gain a greater insight into all of her class. 
After finding the gaps in her pupils' knowledge, she designed real maths tasks that enabled her to secure her judgments of each benchmark child's ability. Parallels, perpendicular. But has the evidence she gathered enabled her to make sound level judgments? And will the moderation panel agree with her? I just want to make sure that coupled with other evidence from the children's books, that I really can show um, what the children know and feel secure about that. The panel assessing the evidence are Jackie's math subject leader, Anna Farrelly, and two experienced moderators from neighbouring schools, Laura McCutcheon and Nikki Hamblin. And while they assess Jackie's judgments, she's getting her class ready to teach the parents. Your task this evening is to go back to school and to see if you, in fact, can find all the aspects on the task cards in your children's artwork. Now, kids, you are not allowed to help. Not first of all, let's see how much mum and dad can do by themselves. OK, off you go. Uh, properties of shape, what did you go for? I went for a high four. High four. Yeah, I've got level four as well. Mm. I've, I, yeah, I've got level four. Because he's doing a lot of what's needed for level four. Yeah. You can look, there's um, evidence one and two, it's got a lot of level four. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah one and two. a range of quadrilaterals that you can see in different orientations, which you can see clearly from that picture. Yeah. Up to the nearest five degrees. So an angle measuring 30 degrees to the nearest five. What do, what do each corner of a triangle have to add up to? Uh, I don't know, tell me. It has to make 180 80 degrees. degrees. OK. I think if he can recognise that, then he'd know what 3D shape he's making. Yes. But then he couldn't actually... We haven't actually seen a 3D shape. Them, yeah. yeah. OK. We've got three lines here. Doesn't it? It has to be the same distance in between it each time, doesn't it? Otherwise, it's a bit... So those... Are those those two are, are, Yeah, they're parallel, aren't they? So if we feed back saying that we feel that this child would be working at high level four with Absolutely. some aspects of five, but we can't... It's not been able It's time for Jackie to hear the verdict. So for the quality of judgments, we put that you are mostly accurate, which I think speaks for itself. Yep. So you put um, yes. three level fours, making it a high level four. Yep. We completely agreed with properties of shape, and we yes. completely agreed with measures. OK. It looks like she was right about Luke, whose level she discovered through the APP process has leaped to well above national expectations. For the effectiveness of the, the collection, the annotation, we thought it was an absolutely fantastic sample. So all of your clear annotations, all the mm. way through, these ones were really helpful. We saw elements of level five, and this yes. was basically due to the vocabulary yeah. of the shape we work on is fantastic. It just makes it easier for the referring back and, and the evidencing side of things, doesn't yeah. it, really? I think the whole process of APP has really given me some reflection time. I think I'm also going to use it as a diagnostic tool to find out what aspect of mathematics a child is actually stuck on. Um, so that I can really drill down um, and give the right and put it put the right interventions in place to help that child move on in their learning and understanding. And I think without APP, you're scrabbling around in the dark a little bit. Mm -hmm.